Hello and welcome. This January, we are talking about the small changes you can take that will make a huge difference in your life. In previous weeks, we've looked at health and money. Now, we've all had or read stories of famous people who rose above great odds to find success. Have you ever wondered what innate qualities they possessed that kept them going when most mortals would have given up? Today, we speak with several inspiring Kenyans who are pursuing their aspirations and finding success despite facing huge obstacles. I'm Carol Mandi, Karibuni Sebuleni. Our first guest quit her comfortable job in 2007 to pursue her dream of becoming a life coach. She's also a motivational speaker, a trainer, and the author of two books, Celebrate the Hard Times and Born to Win Teams. Welcome to the show, Irene. Thank you, Karen. It's so good to have you with us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. What motivated your ti the title of your book, Celebrate the Hard Times? I was going through a lot of personal hard times, personal mm. crisis, but I saw it as an opportunity, you know, to turn a crisis into an opportunity. And so instead of sitting back and feeling sorry for myself because I was going through rejection, mm. someone had come home, paid dowry, and so we were just waiting to walk down the aisle. And, you know, he called off the engagement last minute. Mm -hmm. I had also won a green card and I didn't, was not given the visa. There was too much happening that was negative. But I looked at it and said, all these are problems that can either weigh me down mm -hmm. or I can choose to look at this as opportunity to tell the world my story mm -hmm. and make it a better world. Okay. Yeah. Now, Irene, you've coached so many individuals. Yeah. Um, what would you tell us are the three things that perhaps hold us back mm -hmm. from achieving the life that we desire? Number one is lack of taking personal responsibility. Mm. So many of us want so many things out of life, whether it's help, whether it's success in other areas, but we are waiting for somebody else, you know? So lack of initiative on our side, you know, and that's why we have a lot of people sitting back to blame the government, mm. you know, or parents, mm. or I grew up in this background. So I'd say the number one reason why most people don't achieve is that they don't take a personal initiative mm -hmm. to be responsible, to for create you know the the mm. outcomes you you that want that you want yeah right? because I find also you know it's either your parents um, for a lot of women it's my husband mm -hmm. he won't let me do this or he won't let me be this yeah it's my employer mm -hmm. you know it's everybody else except ourselves exactly okay so that's one yeah. two others uh, fear mm -hmm. there's also just a lot of fear of the unknown like mm -hmm. when I was quitting my job I had lost so many friends because where are you going to you're mm -hmm. not you mean you're actually not taking up a job with another company do you know what it means to start up a business mm -hmm. and you know if i allow what if you fail you, what if you fail and mm -hmm. if i allowed that fear to cripple me mm -hmm. i would still either be somewhere having this dream of being an international motivational speaker but really not acting so there is a lot of fear mm -hmm. and fear is healthy if you take it positively mm -hmm. but a lot of people allow fear to just hold them back okay yeah thank you yeah um, and the third thing I think a lack of plan mm -hmm. because you must have a plan towards where you want to go mm -hmm. and that's where life coaching comes in. That's why before I quit my job I got a life coach, an international life coach mm -hmm. and he was the only person who could actually understand my dream of where I wanted to go and so we came up with dreams you I mean with plans and goals when are you gonna quit you mm -hmm. know what exactly are you gonna do after you quit mm -hmm. and that's where life coaching comes in that's where life could have a plan that you begin to implement isn't yes it? yeah okay yeah. thank you Irene we're going to take questions or comments for Irene now from the audience life coaching is it an independent career like other career Yes, it is, and I would say it's pretty new in Kenya, but in the West it's well established and it's beginning to pick up in Kenya because people then realize there's still a gap. Maybe after you've gone to a counselor and a counselor is dealing with your past, what about the future? So life coaching is an independent career on itself and you should seek to be certified if you really want to be a professional in the field. And is there any difference between life coaching and motivation? Yes, there is, because motivation, you basically are getting people enthusiastic enough, but a life coach will actually work with you until you achieve your goal. You talked about a fear of the unknown. Yeah. How do you overcome that fear? Well, I guess you personally have to be very determined, and you've got to write your fears down and analyze them. Mm -hmm. I, I think that is one of the things I did. So I wrote down the fears. So what is it that if I step out of employment, what are the fears? One is that you'll be broke because mm -hmm. you're not on a paycheck. So write down your fears and analyze them, and you realize that some of them are actually unfounded. 
and okay. again to overcome fear talk to people who have done what you're trying to do and have been successful now Irene final question what perhaps can we draw from Maurice's story uh -huh. um, as the gems that we can apply in our lives I guess first of all determination and the mm -hmm. fact that he knew what he wanted to do and if I can comment on the education a lot of people ask me where were you trained to be a motivational speaker mm -hmm. I didn't know of any school in Kenya that would train me to be a motivational speaker so sometimes there are giftings and talents within people passions that can be turned into cash mm -hmm. but we don't find those schools you know in the traditional school mm -hmm. so at least you've got to keep going until you find the people who can give you you know that professional education mm -hmm. so sometimes it's not all about what we learn in the traditional schools and like Morris is really trying to bring out that clear Irene I just want to maybe also take some thoughts on this from you because of the passion um, that we sense from these two women you know and how passion mm -hmm. can encourage us in what uh, towards achieving our goals yeah Excellent. I think I'll begin by saying that passion is a two-edged sword. Mm -hmm. Passion is both what you love and also what you hate. And mm -hmm. I love what Anna said, mm -hmm. that she didn't just you know hate being poor she hated it with a passion mm -hmm. and I think out there to our audiences mm -hmm. there are many people who are just complaining about being poor but they really don't hate poverty with a passion because believe you me the moment you hate anything with a passion you know you're bound to change the circumstances so I'd encourage people to live out of passion both what you love and also what you cannot stand mm -hmm. the days I used to walk from Westlands to Donholm 18 kilometers I hated being poor and being a neighbor and I believe it's that passion that has propelled me to where I am. And I can tell you as a life coach, one of the things that people really want is financial freedom. Mm -hmm. But how many people are really passionate about coming out from poverty? Mm -hmm. Maurice gave us an example and Anna also that they were raised up by single parent. Mm -hmm. And so was I. Mm -hmm. But I didn't look at that as an excuse, something mm -hmm. to lean on. You know, I was only raised up by a single parent. Mm -hmm. I met my dad at the age of 30. Mm -hmm. But I believe the passion that they have towards life, mm -hmm. that passion is what drives people to achieve greatness. Now, Irene, your final thoughts on this topic of small steps. You don't have to wait until you have all the resources, especially finances. Sometimes there's so much we have that is free. For example, you can have a mentor who is not necessarily charging you, and speaking to that mentor is free. You can have parents, like we are saying, even if they are single parents. But the thing is, start towards the direction of your dreams. Do something. Don't just sit there and do nothing. Writing down your goals is another small step that people can take towards the bigger vision that they have. So there are many things that people can do to get started on the journeys of their passion. And keeping a positive outlook, you know. I love what Anna said, reading motivational books. Every time I hear a survey that Kenyans don't read, I really wonder who do they interview. So buy yourself a book. It will start you on your journey to where you really want to go. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. In our SMS question, we'd like to hear from you. So write in and tell us some of the obstacles you've had to overcome in your life. We will share the most inspiring stories in future episodes of Sebuleni. Plus, Two SMS winners will walk away with a book, Celebrate the Hard Times by Irene Moravi and Dreams from My Father by Barack Obama. I'm inspired, aren't you? Basketball legend Michael Jordan once said, Obstacles don't have to stop you. If you run into a wall, don't turn around and give up. Figure out how to climb it, go through it or work around it. Now that's some good advice. Until next week, God bless and stay inspired.